And good morning. Welcome to today's races here at Laurel Park. Early morning edition here of the Early Handicapping Show. Big day of horse racing coast to coast all around the world today as, uh, of course, it's Kentucky Derby Day down there at Churchill. We wish everybody good luck down there and uh, hopefully uh, a safe and successful day down there at Churchill. We look forward to seeing all those top thoroughbreds at Pimlico for Preakness 145. Of course, that's the first Saturday in October this year, October 3rd. So how you doing, Keith? You're out there by the historic Laurel Park paddock a little different this year we have a big weekend yeah. nonetheless uh in addition to kentucky derby uh day we have four one hundred thousand dollars stakes today five one hundred thousand dollars stakes on monday so a big weekend to get to uh let's uh but before we get to all that all right. we'll, we'll get back to that let's talk about the stronic five real quick from yesterday another nice payout in the stronic five there there it is paid almost forty seven hundred mm -hmm. you had the uh, the six dollar winner here at laurel park uh, to, to lead you off then you had the upset yeah uh, Katie Davis and Annette Eubanks having a big day yesterday. They paired up for two wins, uh, and they had that uh, that fourteen dollar upset winner in Lake B of the Stronic Five yesterday, Keith. Yeah, and we talked about race seven. So it was a race in which you spread that. Yeah, the winner paid six forty, but was gonna act like a little bit higher price when it was all said and done in the Stronic Five because that race was just it was really tough all the way through. I think you spread with four or five horses, I, I believe, in that race. So, yeah, that added value and you yeah, 46, almost 5,000. Not a bad little return. Got to love it. That Stronic Five pays every week. All right, so we'll have it again next Friday. Let's talk about today here. It's a Preakness prep weekend for $100,000 stakes today. Shalon's going to be a heavy favorite for Arno Delacour. Bunch of bunch of big time uh, trainers and, and, and jockeys and everything here today. Stakes action today. Key starts in race two. Chad Brown with the heavy favorite there. Wow. Smooth with a kick with Trevor McCarthy aboard. Yeah, and I'm interested to see Tasting the Stars as well. Boy, she looks like a talented uh, filly in her own right off time. A little, maybe a little bit of a reach, but I tell you what, you just don't go in the spot. These kind of connections, they know what they've got, and I, I'm expecting a big return for the two tasting the stars. All right, that's race yeah. two, the Twix stakes. You get Jevion Toledo on the two tasting the stars. Mm -hmm. Toledo, our second leading rider with 35 wins. Rossio Caramanos, the leading rider with 37 wins. The Bug, Charlie Marquez, he had a win yesterday. He has 30 wins. He's your third leading rider of the meet. So that's uh, Preakness Prep. Let's get right to it here. Let's show you the track and weather. Unfortunately, that rain uh, and, and we had like tornadoes in the area and stuff Thursday afternoon. No. We had a lot of rain Thursday afternoon. So no turf today because we have some big stake races on the turf on Monday. And those races have big implications for Preakness weekend as you have the, uh, the Henry S. Clark on Monday. That's a big prep for the dinner party stakes on Preakness weekend. So we're gonna, that, that turf's going to be perfect on Monday. Unfortunately, no turf today. Main track will be beautiful and fast. Looks like they, uh, they're working on it now. And it'll be perfect come mm -hmm. post time here at 12.10. Your, your, your thoughts yeah. on, on the main track here? Yeah, Stan, uh, playing fair. And, and you know, the, the good thing, I guess, with today, the way the uh, stakes were scheduled, we've got these horses. You know, they were all the dirt stakes, right? So that's good. We really didn't lose any of those right. uh, from the turf, right? So, th so that's a good thing. And we'll get the turf action fired up on Monday, and I think that yeah. turf course gave me plenty of time. It's sun shining out, warming up a little bit. Beautiful day, a little bit of a breeze. We should be good to go, Stan. And, uh, we, we gave them that exact in the Oaks, Stan. I'm going to toot our horn a little bit. You like Swiss Skydiver? We had She Dares the Devil. You had that. I, I was wondering if oh. that was the horse you were talking about. You had that horse on top, there didn't you? There you go. Yeah, oh, yeah. Bra you Brad know. Cox, right? Oh, yeah, Brad Cox, and, and that was uh, the horse. We I, I had kind of – I went back in my notes, and I did have a note about that horse from the race three back against Swiss Guy Diver at Oakland, and I said she will beat these horses next time she faces them. That was a horror trip she had that afternoon. I'm glad to, glad that we could we could catch her and we give out that exact. It was over a hundred bucks. So nice, we'll nice. It. All right, well, a good pick there. Congratulations. Yeah. Good luck today. You're you're, uh, you're you're picking a big race down there at Churchill. You going with the favorite is the law? I am, but I'm going to work around my two price horses, Max Player and Attachment Rate. And, and as you always play the Derby, you toss the favorite on one ticket or two tickets and work around with all the bombs and really hope you get a score. But I, I can't be rooting against, you know, Tis the law. He, he, he's been really something special. Yeah, it'd be nice to see him march to Baltimore, Maryland with a triple crown on the line for Preakness 145. Let's tell everybody how they can watch and bet all the action this afternoon and all over the country 
with first bet. Your favored ADW, either first bet or express bet. You have the, they have the same promotion. Promo code is Sport of Kings. So new signups. Use that promo code Sport of Kings, and you get a $10 credit up to a $500 bonus. First bet users have free access to the best features in horse racing, including AI enhanced algorithms to help you make smarter picks, betting live video and replays for more than 300 tracks on first bet so don't miss any of the action with first bet we have a decent little carryover in the 20 cent rainbow pick six today that's going to start race six the deputed testimony stakes and there it is five thousand four hundred and twenty four dollars for the pick six carryover starting race six tim tullock will have a ticket for that i have a ticket for both uh, pick fives keith you have a ticket for the early pick four all of our tickets and picks for today are on the website, laurelpark.com, underneath the handicapping section. Keep up with all the latest mail and racing news with all the press releases on the website, laurelpark.com. A lot of press releases about all the stakes action this weekend. So let's get right to it here. Race one, we have a carryover in the rolling super high five. That's a low 15% takeout. There's the carryover, 2200 67 bucks here in race one. We have it every race with seven or more horses. So if they don't hit the super high five here in race one, it carries over to the next race with seven or more. Also, race one kicks off the popular early pick five. Mandatory payout on this early pick five with that industry low 12% takeout. I have a very affordable $32 ticket for the early pick five. I'm four deep here in race one. Maybe I can get a, a price home with the one bourbon Ada with Forrest Boyce aboard. We're off the turf in race one, going a flat mile. I go four deep, one, two, four, seven. My single comes in race four. That's the Alma North, the three Shalon. There's a corrected morning line mm -hmm. uh, for the three Shalon. She's your seven to five morning line favored in the Alma North. She's looking for three in a row. She's a talented six-year-old mare. She's a little shy of a million dollars in earnings. She wins today. She goes over a million in earnings. So trainer Arno Delacour has done a nice job with Shalon. McCarthy rides. So I single there on the three Shalon. Race four, the Alma North. Let's take a look here. Race one, going a flat mile on a fast track. Maiden claiming 40,000 for Philly and Mares three and up. I go with the seven back on Dan Daniel Centeno. He was all, he's a, a, a very good journeyman jockey, and, and he was on fire to start this meet. He kind of came to the meet, this summer meet, a little late, and then he was on a roll. He was 6 for 16 before, he, before the injury. He was, he was hitting at 38%. He's hungry. Yeah. He sees all these other riders winning all these races. Centeno's hungry. He, he's dangerous on, on anything. He's live on anything. Uh, he, he rides. So keep your eye on Daniel Centeno. He's going to surge here this final month of the summer meet. So I have him on top here with the seven back on for, for Ann Merriman to take the blinkers off. This horse has some decent races. Last winner on the main track at, against Maiden 40, a big second going a mile, a good third going seven furlongs. So that's good enough. I, yeah. I go with the seven back and on top. I tell you, yeah, she looks like the horse to beat. The, the, I think the road's going to go through her. This one horse, Bourbon A, did bring some speed to the table, albeit, you know, 50 chains up towards the front. So some front end action. Um, but, yeah, back in suffered some tough beats the last two. Uh, goes to the front here. But I, I, I'm going to land on the two. Gail, my original pick was the five. Zola B scratch. I scratched the five and the nine out of the opener. But, Gail, for me, look at that second out uh, record here with the maidens for, for Jonathan Thomas. 37%. Mm -hmm. That is huge. Uh, they spent a lot of money on this filly. She got her start here. Uh, targeted the Maryland race, protected with the waiver. Ran on pretty good in, in, in debut. And I tell you, this horse bottom side, there is dirt there. She was the dirt sprint. Uh, stakes weren't on, on the uh, dirt. Sprinting was windy for us. Tunnelists, we know. Uh, sure. they, they've handled the, the, the offspring have done well on the turf, but they can handle the dirt as well. So, uh, Gale to me. It's Gale or Beck in, in the opener. All right, you get Toledo on the two. Gale, both Caramanos and Toledo. They got shut out yesterday, so look out. Uh, they're going to be hungry today, your top two riders so toledo on the two gale the uh the let's see the three uh the three i don't use the one bourbon ada a good second on the turf last down has a couple turf routes under her belt three-year-old philly by bourbon courage for carla morgan uh, hopefully she'll she'll get a, a nice smart ride by forest boys and might be able to show up at yeah. a big price here in the opener. Yeah, I'm going to toss Witty Banter into the mix. Did okay in that off-the-turf race last time. Just kind of a mild progression into it. So I'm uh, going to have to get into it a little bit earlier if she's going to catch Beckon or maybe out-finished Gale. 
All right, so we're going to Flat Mile Main Track here. Race one to kick off the early pick five. Here we go. The stakes action starts in race two. The stake races today, races two, mm -hmm. four, six, and eight. You like the early pick four mm -hmm. starting in race two. The Twix stakes going a mile and a 16th on the main track. Here's your ticket. Let's check it out. Yeah, and the value stand looks like it's probably going to come in races three and five when it's all said and done. So I'm spreading there. Uh, second race, one and two. Uh, let's go smooth with kick, tasting the stars, uh, the favorite in there a third race a little deeper four seven eleven twelve uh sipping champagne goes first time claudio uh, millie child looking uh, looking for a little setup up front but she's been consistent now making some runs fourth race the three and the four the two favorites i could not get past them shalana and amy's challenge and there we go a spread again race five i'd like to go a little bit deeper these are the two-year-old fillies uh, going six for longs on the dirt the maiden fillies uh two four six eight for me in there um, I could see Dale's horse if you want to add one more, uh, the five. But, I mean, that, that, that's, that's, that's a pretty wide open race there. $32 for the early pick four. All right, starts race two, a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. It's the hundred thousand dollar Twix stakes for Philly and Mares three and up. Chad Brown's gonna have the favorite in here, the one smooth with a kick, eight to five morning line for this four year old daughter of Candy Ride. Trevor McCarthy rides. Let's check out the last race with uh four smooth with a kick, mm -hmm. August 9th up at Saratoga, going nine furlongs against first level allowance company. There she is behind horses, turning for home, but she wins by three and a half, going away with a big 83 buyer speed figure. Here she comes, splitting horses, a game win yeah. by this Philly last out. Patient ride by Castellano in that short field. She's lucky enough to catch a short field again, going from the A other than right into the stakes company. Uh, yeah, I believe she is the one to beat off a recency stand, and that performance right there, uh, visually impressive. She keys up against the right horse, uh, horses. Making sense came out of that race to win yesterday up in New York. I think it was a restrict, restricted stakes. But, yeah, draws inside beautifully. Uh, Artful Splatter uh, could be the speed. I think she's just a little bit better on an off track. But tasting the stars, I I'm going to take a shot with her. I mean, this is a horse meant to go long right off the bat, one in debut back in January of 19. At the fairgrounds, absolutely whistled. Final time, I went back and compared some things that day. She was only two-fifths off uh, of a street band. That was uh, the Larry Jones horse. The three-year-old filly went on and did some big things, right? So that was big right out of the box. So uh, tasting the stars for me, little hiccup at Colonial, working bullets, working very strongly. I, I just don't, I don't think this is a reach. I think that they, they, they want to come in here and win this race, Michael Stidham and company. So that's my top selection. All two, right, one, so you're five, going with a, a Javion Toledo yeah. early daily double. Yeah. I, I used the two, tasting the stars, a well-bred four-year-old filly by Bodie Meister. She's been working lights out up there mm -hmm. on the Tapita at Fair Hill for trainer Michael Stidham. How about the five here? Wicked awesome for Ferris Allen. Horacio Caramano is your leading rider. Rides this four-year-old filly by awesome again. She's had two troubled trips mm -hmm. this summer against Gorillas up there at Delaware, and she, she's been running okay. Uh, so that was an okay effort in the grade two Dell cap with, with the troubled trip around the far turn of 27 to one. Yeah, I'm sure they were hoping for maybe a little bit sooner return to the races because that March 6th race at Laurel, Really, really good. I mean, and then she went into some deep, deep waters up at Delaware. Yeah, trouble, but still didn't really give up in those races, Stan. Uh, held, held willingly to the wire. Yeah, she's proven she can handle the two turns. She'll kind of just easily drop in, I would think, save some ground and try to make a run into this flow. Yeah. All right, so a real nice group here in the Twix. How about the seven-time winner at Laura Park, Artful Splatter? Yeah. She beat Anna's Bandit. Pimentel rides for Kieran McGee. Any shot uh, of her pulling off the upset? Well, I use her at the bottom of my picks here. Yeah, we, we know she loves it here. Kieran's done a phenomenal job uh, with her. I just think uh, if it was wet, wet track, I, I'd move her up a little bit. Not so sure against these. I, I think, you know, they're going to be aggressive, I believe, with her. Uh, they're going to have to catch her on the front end, but uh, I, I think she's going to kind of get engaged maybe a little sooner than what she wants. How about but, uh, Nacho? Another, another Nacho's job, back Mark. in town yeah. here. Ignacio Correa's with the uh, Peruvian bred Juliana. Victor Carrasco yeah. on this five-year-old mare. She's a three-time winner on an off track. This will be her first start on a fast track today. Yeah, group one winner, right? Down at down Monte Rico, Peru. And that's going back a, a, a ways, but uh, yeah, try, getting back to the dirt, trying to pick her head up off of some of those races on the turf and the synthetic, yeah.
All right, so the Twix in race two kicks off the stakes action. Let's take a look here at race three. Off the turf in race three. They're saving it for Monday. The turf course on Monday is going to be absolutely perfect for those big stake races we have on the turf Monday. So race three, five and a half on the main track. Claiming 16,000 Philly and Mayors, three and up. Never won two lifetime. I go with the seven on top here. Millie Child, she was entered main track only for this race by Anthony Aguirre. She gets Javion Toledo to ride. Toledo rides this mare absolutely beautiful. He gave her a beautiful ride last time. He gets her to settle and relax early on a loose range. She makes a big run on the far turn. And I think she's going to get a nice setup today. The five looking for candy. The eight pins and needles mm -hmm. who she beat last time. Mm -hmm. And speed on the outside with yep. the 12. Keep her in spite. So five, eight, and 12 are the early speed. I think it's going to be a nice setup here for Toledo and the seven Millie Childs. Yeah, I, I think she's going to make a solid run into it uh, this afternoon. Um, I, I, this is this is the right the right move, Stan. I, I like this spot. You got it here. Uh, she's going to make a rally because I don't think all these speeds are going to hang around. Maybe the quickest of all, Keeper and Smite, Spite may emerge around the turn into the lane, but yeah, uh, she's going to have to look in her rearview mirror for for Millie Child. And how about even sipping champagne going first time now for uh, for Claudio Gonzalez? Always weary. You got to You got You got to You know. You got to take notice of this kind of barn change, and even the four Flozana. Flozana is a horse. Uh, looks like they they protecting a little bit. They stay on this race on on the dirt. Showed a little bit of ability on the dirt, but this is first time blinkers on the main track for Flozana. So uh, I could see some improvement. They 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 hinted at it with the protect move here up to 16. All right, you get Trevor McCarthy on the four Flozana. Uh, yeah, sipping champagne. She could be dangerous here. First off to claim for Claudio, yeah. our leading trainer. He's 29% first off to claim. He gets Julio Correa to ride yeah. this mare. Correa, a little cold this meet. 0 for 42 here, uh, the rider mm -hmm. uh, of the uh, sipping champagne. But the barn change could step this mare up. She has some back races last winter against tougher company, against Starter Allowance Company. She was running some decent races last winter uh, for, for Jackie Savoy. Yeah, and if you're looking to get off the schneid, right? Yep. A little better outfit to maybe run to uh, than Claudio's. Right. Yeah. All right, so off the <laughs> turf in race three. Let's turn the page. Stakes action resumes here in race four. We kick off the middle pick four in race four. It's $100,000. I'm a north. Philly Marriage three and up. Six furlongs on the main track. My best bet here of the day, the three Shalon. Corrected morning line mm -hmm. odds here on the three Shalon. It says seven or two yeah. uh, in the PPs. Uh, I think we have a board to show you here for Great. Shalon. Do we have it? There you go. There okay, we race go. four, number three, Shalon. She's seven to five, not seven or two. Seven to five on the six-year-old mayor. A little shy, about thirty, about twenty-nine thousand shy of a million dollars in earnings. She's looking for three in a row this summer. She gets McCarthy to ride for Delacour. Uh, so I, I put I put the three Shalon on top. You do as well. Yeah, it doesn't matter where she goes, Dan. She shows up. Right. I mean, Shalon is just she is just a true blue racehorse, a sheer professional. Uh, she's another one drawing in towards the inside. Speed surrounds her in never enough time in Amy's Challenge. Those two are very, very quick. I do think Amy's Challenge will be the speed that survives, but I don't know if they're going to survive, uh, you know, the, the rally of Shalon late through the final eighth of a mile. But you can just kind of put her just where you want, just off the lead. She'll grind you down. All right, let's, let's show that last race from August 16th at Mammoth on a sloppy track against Stakes Company. Uh, she goes right to the front, basically, in this race at, what, three to five in a, in a five-horse field. Yeah. She just uh, She's dictating here, uh, not not really under much of a ride. Who, who's on her here? Uh, Paco. Paco Lopez yeah. was, was on her at, at Monmouth. Trevor McCarthy was aboard for that Stakes win, two back at Delaware. So fast track, sloppy track, doesn't matter. This is one six-year-old race mare by dialed in a mine shaft stallion. Yeah, she's only run run here one time with a win. I mean, she's won everywhere, though, Stan. And I tell yeah. you, that race there, the video you saw, she kind of just toyed with those horses. I probably felt it was like a morning workout, just getting some work in between horses and say, okay, I'm just going to do what I need to do to go ahead and beat you guys. But, uh, yeah, she'll take game. But Amy's challenge, she, she's a really, really good race mare in her own right as well. So you got to get tied on because she's going to bring some speed to the table, and she just doesn't give up, you know, that easily through the stretch. All right, so they all have to beat the 7-5 favorite, Shalon, race for the Amanorth to kick off the middle 
pick four. Here we go. Race five is not a stake race, but it's going to be one of the features of the day. A maiden special weight for two-year-old Philly. Six furlongs on the main track. Originally carded on the main track. We have some well-bred yep. first-time starters in here. A Nyquist Philly, the five Moquist. The six Potion by Ghost Zapper from Michael Matz. Hammy Smith has a McLean's Music Philly in here. I go with the two Miss Marley on top here. For Michael Matz, Michael Matz had, had a, the doing well with the two-year-olds this summer. He had a 1-2 finish mm -hmm. with two-year-old Phillies a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Matz a couple wins this summer. And it's a nice Philly by Union Rags. A useful debut at almost 10 to one. She rallied uh, to, to finish a good second behind Tiz Ferguson, who was right. a very sharp winner that day for trainer yeah. Cal Lynch. Uh, Pimentel's aboard Miss Marley for the debut. He's back aboard today. Uh, she's come back since that debut on August 8th and a, a couple useful maintenance uh, half-mile works up there at Fair Hills. So I think she's sitting on a big yeah. one. I think she improves off that debut effort. I think she'll be a little closer early on. She's breaking on the inside again today like she did in debut, but she, she has some pretty good experience and education from that race yep. on August 8th. So I, I think Pimentel will have the two Miss Marley a little closer early on today. She was certainly well prepped, Stan. She handled a little traffic uh, kind of up behind horses around the turn, then worked between horses, didn't shy away from that before angling out and making a good steady progression. Was second best behind Tiz Ferguson, the Lynch runner that went ahead and dictated. A good angle here, second out, positive angle for Michael Matz, but I'll go to the other uh, Matz as a user as well, the six potion into the mix by go zapper and the mares have been a good one and why not a couple couple strong siblings and a full brother uh that was like three for six very good horse uh we've got a stat do we have well hold on time out yep. all right the, the picks were wrong there who do you have on top here keith oh Stan, I'm four six two eight. I was just kind of piggybacking on the Matz factor. Right, I do okay. have hitch right, and ride. My, my bad. Yeah, that's okay. Bad. That's okay. But uh, Michael Matz here, not doesn't run a ton with the. Uh, these were two for seven and five for seven. In the money that, that was two year olds at Laurel. I might have forgot to put that in there. But two year olds at Laurel. He's two for seven and five for seven in the money. Nine eleven. Your ROI over the last few years. That's strong. So, yeah, we saw Miss Marley show up. That's good enough. Guys, in Potion, you're talking about this mare and why not, has had a debut winner. Um, the full was very, very good. So, I think scored early. So, Potion for me is going to be uh, – going to be my top selection in here. I'm sorry, it's going to be my second selection. My top selection, you got me all confused. That's all right. uh, That's okay. Hitch a ride. Gary Cap, sneaky. He, usually we like him second out, Gary Cap, but this horse by Michelwish. Uh, new stallion, we talked about Michelwish the other day. Has had a couple winners. This mare, bottom side, two debut winners from five foals with a second. That's good enough for me. The works indicate she's ready. I think he's going to sneak away at an okay price, maybe in that five to eight to one range. Let's hope for Gary Capuano. All right, Gary Capuano yeah. Barn having a strong summer meet. How about the five year Moquist by Kentucky Derby winner uh, Nyquist, uh, who's going to mm -hmm. do pretty well as a sire? Nyquist by Uncle Mo. How about the dam here? Island bound by Spitestown. Katie Voss trained this uh, filly. She was five for 27. Made almost 300000 She was a great at stakes winner. She won the grade three mm -hmm. winning colors mm -hmm. at Churchill, and she was second in the grade two honorable miss. So Island Bound was a runner. Uh, this is a well-bred filly here. Charlie Marquez, the bug rides for Dale Capuano. Yep. You know she'll be well prepared. Nice gate work, August 30th, 101. Uh, so the five Moquist, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining, is going to take some attention mm -hmm. at the windows today. Yeah, I think Nyquist is going to be okay as a stallion. And, Going a little story here. Dale claimed the half brother from from Katie Voss. Then the name's escaping me. I, I should have put it in here. But anyhow, that horse came back to win a couple of races, if I'm not mistaken, for Dale. So had an angle for horses out of out of this mare. Yeah, I I could see it. I, I you know the, the eight whiskey and rye. You go to the bottom stand. Uh, men's Grill hooking up with Hammy Smith. Hammy Smith. You know when they when the two year olds his two year olds go maiden special weight. You better watch out. Two for 12, six for 12 in the money in the last couple of years uh, with the two-year-old maiden special weights on the dirt. 631, your ROI. you got to love that return on investment. Oh, yeah, whiskey and rye. Should get a nice trip on the outside. Sharp half-mile work, August 25th. You get Victor Carrasco, so a real nice maiden special yeah. weight for the two-year-old fillies here in race five. Let's get a quick commercial break. Pick six, carry over in race six to the, the deputed testimony. We'll check it out right after this.
All right, stakes action here in race six. It's the $100,000 Deputer Testimony Stakes for three-year-olds and upward a mile and a 16th on the main track. We start the rainbow pick six in race six. Here's the carryover, a little over 5,400 today for that rainbow pick six. Uh, Tim Tullock, he has a ticket for it. Let's check it out real quick, see how he plays it. He goes all here in the Deputer Testimony. Maybe he'll get a little price with the, uh, the four tie bolts live or the three cord maker is live in this race. The seven awesome D. DJ's live with Caramano, so he hits the all button here in the Deputa testimony. Then he has a couple singles, the one in race 10, and then the eight in race 11. Let's check out the $100,000 Deputa testimony. Two turns on the main track here in race six. We have a video spotlight. I go with the six, Harper's first ride on top. See if this horse can turn the tables on Infuriated. Infuriated beat Harper's first ride, last out up at Parks. Here's the race. August 12th up there, Infuriator just uh, ran away with it. Gets in front by seven, turning for home. Wins by almost five with a big 94 buyer speed figure, a lifetime best. Now, this was on a muddy track up there at Parks. This is the Parks. It's the home track for this five-year-old gelding by Big Drama. Trevor McCarthy rides Infuriator today. But now Infuriated has to come down here to Laurel Park to make his first start against Stakes Company and Harper's first ride. This is this is uh, Laurel Park's the home track mm -hmm. for Harper's first ride. Harper's first ride, a four-year-old son of Painter, a five-time winner here at Laurel Park. You get Angel Cruz, Angel and Claudio, about 31% here at Laurel Park. So I'm going to uh, see if uh, this horse is a, a closer. Well, he fell way far back in the mud. He, so he went to the front wow. in an allowance race last July. So I don't think uh, Harper's first ride will be that far back today. I think it'll be a little yeah. closer. And I, I'm hoping he can turn the tables on Infuriated. It's one of those races you just look at, Stan, and say, okay, might have been a perfect storm for the winner. He's never really run like that. And uh, you, you saw the conditions of the tracks, muddy track, sloppy track. And, and, and Lita just got out there and just ran away with it. Today's another day, and I want to see him do that again on a fast track. Yes, he does get an assist with the scratch of compound it coming out. It looked like a horse that was going to be able to keep him honest in the front end. But you've got to – a uh, first-time Safi Joseph claim, right? The one Grump's Little Tots coming in who's got some pretty tactical speed in his own right and his run against some pretty good horses. So I do think he's going to go ahead and, and engage Infuriated a little sooner, maybe around the 3 8 bowl, and then we'll go on with it from there. Harper's first ride. I give him the edge, Stan. This is his home track. He's going to come back and unleash one of his patented runs that we've seen here. So Harper's first ride for me to wear him down. But I tell you, Grump's Little Tots, interesting. First off the claim, this guy just everything he, he, he claims seems to win. He's like the Claudia of down south, right? Sure, sure. Yep. And uh, Pimentel got a nice ground-saving trip on the one. I didn't use the one. The four tie bolt, the other Claudio uh, gelding in this race. Weston Hamilton uh, rides this four-year-old son of Kitten's Joy. He's been okay uh, this summer. Good third last out. A big second behind Harper's first ride with a 92 buyer back in July going a mile. So tie bolt, this is his home track mm -hmm. as well. Look at that work, August 28th, 47 and 3. So Claudio has this four-year-old sitting on go. Tybalt could run a big one at a decent price. Yeah, it'll be interesting if he can turn the tables. Uh, great ride a couple races back where the Giacomo's rode knowing second was going to be the, the spot to be. The other speeds chased and faded, and he did a perfect, well -time, perfectly timed ride, I should say, to be along for the, for the place. He's going to have to improve a little bit to go ahead and beat Harper's first ride. Cord maker, I've been waiting for him to come back. Maybe this move back out to a route will shake him up a little bit and get him back to form. Well, he gets reacquainted with Victor Carrasco uh, today, yeah. so uh, that could help. Carrasco won a bunch of races on the three cord makers. So nice, uh, nice field here mm -hmm. in the Deputo testimony. Race seven's going to kick off the late pick five. No carryover. They hit it yesterday for almost 800. But as always, that low 12% takeout. Let's check out my ticket, $48 ticket for the late pick five. I'm five. Uh, I'm just four deep here in race seven, the five seven. 8-10. Race 8 the Polynesian. What a nice sprint that is. I have the 3, Eastern Bay, the 5, Lakai. Well, don't forget about the 8, where she told me to go with Trevor McCarthy aboard for Brittany Russell. The 8's going to be a nice price in Race 8, the Polynesian. Then just 2-4 in Race 9. My single's going to come with the 1, Angel at War in Race 10. Daniel Centeno aboard for Michael Gorm, Angel at War a main track only entry in race 10. I single on that six-year-old mare. Then I'm four deep in the finale with the one seven eight ten. Let's check out race seven to kick off the late pick five. We're off the turf in race seven. We'll be going a flat mile 
on the main track. Maiden claiming 16,000 three-year-olds and upward. And I go, I go with the 10. Yes means no on top. Are you the kidding me? The five-year-old <laughs> Maiden. He's made over 100,000. Yeah. Give this horse some love. <laughs> yes. He made, he made 102,000 uh, as a Maiden. Trainer Robbie Bales has him in top form right now. He just got beat a half length last down. Catches the right kind of soft group today. Kevin Gomez back aboard. He he stumbled at the start and was bumped last time and still a big second. So, come on. Uh, yes means no. Today could be your day. Yeah. I, I, I know one thing. He's going to make a run into it. Does he want to win? I don't know. I, what a bankroll he's gotten, right? Man, that is strong yeah. uh, for those 27 starts. But uh, I'm looking for a little shot in here with the three English Tavern. Uh, we've got Carrasco aboard. This horse, I went back and watched that race at Delaware in debut. Really just didn't look like didn't handle the turf. Didn't like it at all. Kind of took it easy on him through the, through the stretch. Came back, showed a little bit of late life in that race August the 15th. Now we come back, reported first time gelding. All right, you're seeing buyers of like mid-40s that look like, you know, that's what's going to probably get it done. I don't think he has to improve a ton. I think maybe the first time gelding angle may just get him over the top. And there's dirt winners, route winners in the family. So you're going to get an honest price on the three English Tavern. Yeah, he's the first time gelding yeah. today. So that's a big angle. All right, the three going to be a nice price in race seven. Race eight is the $100,000 Polynesian stake. Six furlongs on the main track for three-year-olds and upwards. Some top sprinters of the East Coast to end this race. Let's show you the race August 20th here at Laurel Park against uh, wide open, no condition allowance race with a big purse going seven furlongs here they are turner for home uh, arch cat's gonna go, gonna win this race lakai uh is gonna uh, what race right race yeah, is this year august 20th uh -huh. yeah august 20th okay arch cat wins this race lakai a good second eastern bay rallies to finish third uh so eastern bay and lakai back in here i'm not sure where arch cat went uh, but Lakai and uh, Eastern Bay to, to fight it out once again here in the Polynesian. Yes, race, you know, it, the way it developed, developed a little differently than what I expected. And Lakai was under pressure around the turn with one more great time who expected to show a little bit more speed off of that rating ride a couple races back, two races back. But I, I tell you, you, you got to respect Lakai. He shows up every time. Um, maybe a little different tactics. Will he go right to the front against this group? And he's pretty quick. One more great time. Maybe he'll sit just off of him. I think he's a, you know, almost kind of a push-button horse per se. You can put him where you want. Uh, I'm using him. I'm going Damon or Damon in here. Taco Supremo. He's beaten Lakai before. The turn back in distance. This angle, this third off of a layoff, sprinting on the dirt. It's been a good one for Damon. 31% over the last three years. Not a lot of separating this horse. And I'll tell you one thing, Taco Supreme, second off the bench going a mile. I thought that was an odd spot. Man, was he dead game to the wire. He's going to bring a finish again this afternoon and just might be able to upset this field. Yeah, he's cutting back from, from, from a mile to go six furlongs today. Damon, 24% route to sprint. So I didn't use Taco mm -hmm. Supreme, but he's an honest five-year-old yeah. Maryland bred by Al Padrino. I don't have a rider on the, the two Taco Supreme. Uh, Eric, do you have the rider on the two Taco Supreme? Still TBA. Okay. okay, interesting. Still uh, the rider still is uh, to be uh, announced there on the two Taco Supreme. Who should Damon put on the Who's available? Let's help him out here. Toledo's <laughs> taken. Uh, where Caramanos is taken. McCarthy's taken. Pimentel's taken. Who should who you you have Taco Supreme on top? Who should Damon put on? I tell you, it, it could be anybody. You know, you've got a host of good riders. I don't I don't want to kind of be biased towards anyone. You know, All I right. got a car sitting out in the parking lot. You All know, right. I, I don't right. want to walk out. You know, think be egged or something like that. Stan. So yeah, we'll we'll let that uh, up to Damon. Damon's a little bigger than me. He can he can handle that decision. I'm not going to go ahead and make it. But uh, right. there's Good. there's somebody in that jock room that's that's capable enough. I can tell you that. A lot of, a lot of good riders still available. All right, yeah. so top, well, I go with the eight here. You wonder why Brittany Russell is doing well with one of the highest win percentages of the summer. Me, well, because she came up under Brad Cox. Brad Cox winning all the grade ones mm -hmm. uh, right now. So this uh, this uh, young Russell woman's going to be a solid trainer for a while. She gets McCarthy to ride where she told me to go. She's 22% with no horses in her barn. Uh, this horse uh, just one race this year at Prairie Meadows, an okay mm -hmm. third in the Iowa Sprint. Been working okay here at Laurel Park. Just just two recent. Was working at Churchill, then here at Laurel. A couple, couple nice works here at Laurel. McCarthy's going to get a real nice trip on this five-year-old who's a two-time winner already yeah. at Laurel Park. Yeah, they went out to Iowa after that race at the fairgrounds back on Thanksgiving. So, big break. Only a four-horse field. 
Stan, and, and I went and watched that race again this morning. Stumbled a little bit out of the gate, but he got great position uh, by the time they went an eighth of a mile. He was poised off a contested pace, just had no fire. He had a little bit of climbing action. Maybe he just didn't like the surface. Now he comes back off a little bit of a break, you know, comes east. Maybe he's had some luck here uh, in the mid-Atlantic region. Maybe that's the key. That, that, that second-place finisher was a 22-time winner out there in that Prairie Meadows race. Of course, by the name of Welder, Oklahoma bred, just been a killer out there in the Midwest. But, yeah, maybe that's, you know, back to this track and coming into a very, very uh, capable barn. So, yeah, I think maybe the move back to the Mid-Atlantic will pick his head up. But uh, I'm going to go 2-5 in here. Two, 2 or 5 for me to win this race. After that, it's tough. Eastern Bay did something I didn't think he'd do. I didn't think he'd rally into it like right. he did last time, Stan. He, he ran pretty well. All yeah. right, so a real nice $100,000 sprint stake here in Race 8. Race 8 kicks off the final pick four of the afternoon. Race 9's on the main track. They're all on the main track today. This race originally carded main track, seven furlongs. First level allowance condition for Philly and Mares, three and up. I have the, the four second. So do you. I go with the two. Indy takes charge on top for trainer Cal Lynch, Victor Carrasco. But let's uh, show you the win. Late July here at Laurel on a sloppy track, going six furlongs, maiden special weight. Lacey Gaudet had this three-year-old daughter of Stay Thirsty ready to fire a big one late July. She wins by nine and a half with an 84 buyer speed figure. Mm -hmm. That was her second race back this summer as a three-year-old. Was it the slop, or did Lacey just have this filly in real good form? Now, now it's her third race back this summer. I think she's sitting on another monster effort. She worked a bullet. Look at this easy win late yeah. July. She just worked a bullet August 24th, a minute and three. <clears throat> you get Toledo on the fours. She'll be tough. I, I, I try yeah. to beat her with the two. Indy takes charge. Uh, but your thoughts there yeah. on don't let sweet fool you. Well, she showed a little bit of ability at two, uh, that second race out behind Cruz and Dance versus Deer, pretty good horses. And then all of a sudden off the break, a big improvement in numbers. The return try, I, you know, she was kind of drifting out. Jock was having a little trouble kind of, you know, maybe it's just something quirky with her. I see she races with the hood and extension blinker, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe they tweak something even a little bit more on July 24th because second back, boy, Straight and true, right to the wire. Uh, obviously, maybe the mud moved her up a little bit there, but and that was that was kind of an eye catcher right there with that kind of number for a three-year-old filly running close to an 85 buyer. Yeah, yeah right back and Lacey stand real quick. A stat: she's five for 24 and 11 for 24 in the money the last three years on the dirt with maiden winners last time out. So you get you got to respect that as well. It looks like they've got her figured out. All right, <clears throat> so a nice sprint here. You have the seven escape uh -huh. fund on top. Ran a big debut win at Saratoga with a 79 buyer, but then what happened August 9th up there? She yeah. got bumped at the start, yeah. and she just packed it in. Maybe Gaffleone protected her uh, in that race, but so uh, we, 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 she's got to get, get a little better uh, start, to a little better break mm -hmm. today. And then uh, that was, a, yeah, a big win, but then uh, not so good August 9th. Drew the rail both starts. You know, I'm thinking that second start. I get a chance to watch it. Maybe she just got discombobulated out of the break and said wanted no parts of running that day. But Mike had her up there for a reason to debut. Obviously, hopefully they cashed a big ticket. But anyhow, eh, you know, you go to Saratoga and win first down with a buyer like that, you've got to have some ability. Okay, sure. she draws outside today. That could be the key to her to relax and bring that finish like she did in debut. And she's got a couple works now back over this track. All right, just real quick, my top pick, the two Indy takes charge. I love the effort last out going a mile. Just got beat a whisker behind the next out winner. Now cuts back to seven furlongs. That's a beautiful move. Mm -hmm. That works a lot, cutting back from a mile to seven furlongs. So here we go. Let's take a look at race 10 to kick off the late daily double <coughs> off the turf in race 10, five and a half furlongs, main track, second level. Allowance condition for Philly and Mares three and up. Michael Gorham, he's always crafty. He entered Angel at War, main track only for this race. He gets his wish. He gets Daniel Centeno. This is a well-accomplished six-year-old mare by Preakness winner Shackelford. She's made almost a quarter of a million. She's a two-time winner here at Laurel Park. The comeback race August 10th at Delaware. That was okay, good enough. She's, she's capable of much better. And I think second off the layoff today with Centeno aboard, we're going to see much better from the one angel at war. Well, this is this is class relief when it comes to the you know the dirt sprints. This is her race to lose basically. She maybe she's not what she once was, and, and I don't even know if she necessarily is going to have to get the lead uh, in, in this particular race. She's going to keep them honest. I, I just think class prevails here in the tenth. All right, so we both have the one angel at war on top, race 10. Race 11 off the turf, going a flat mile. Main track, race 11, 25,000 starter allowance. Philly Amaris, number one, two lifetime. 
I go with the eight. So yeah. do you. Yeah. MJ's lady for Kelly Rubley. Javion Toledo could be a big day for Toledo. He rides this Philly by first dude. Uh, a big effort last out. Going a mile. Muddy track. Maiden special eight. She rallied from off the pace to win uh, with a 64 by her speed figure. So it looks like Rubley has this Philly figured out going in the right direction. We both use MJ's lady on top. Yeah, some other horses in here, which is kind of questionable for him. It looks like she is developing, improving uh, for this outfit. Yeah, tactical enough in here. She may just go right to the front or sit just off of it. But uh, once again, she's going to be an awfully, awfully short price. Fairy Wish gets her wish, gets, yeah. it, gets it on the main track here this afternoon. I think she's a user to complete that exact. You've got the same thing there, 8-7 and a nightcap. All right, cold 8-7 exacta for you there. And race 11, that's it. We're out of time. Big 11 race card starts in 28 minutes. No turf. Main track is fast. On Monday, the turf will be absolutely perfect for those stake races on Monday. So good luck today on the early pick four yeah. and on your Kentucky Derby wagers and uh, beautiful weather out there right now, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, this is, this is picture perfect this afternoon. Hopefully the fans have a great Derby day, make some money, and bring it back on Monday because I tell you, we've got a good betting card in store on Labor Day. Absolutely. All right, Dave Robin is coming up next with scratches and changes. Good luck today. Good luck.